Okay. Okay, so we all have flipped through a magazine. We've all seen billboards. We've all interacted with a variety of different ads on a daily basis. We see hundreds of them, but what are we actually looking at? Um, one of the techniques that advertisers use is the sexual objectification of women in their advertising. And I'm going to discuss how this could cause negative effects in society um, through three, three major ways. The three negative effects would be in relationship satisfaction, the views treat and treatments towards women, and women body goals. The first would be how it affects um, expectations and sex drive within a relationship. Dr. Zerbrigan from National Center for Biotechnology Information discusses in one of his academic journals about a study that shows that women are, are more concerned about body shame, whereas men are more concerned of their significant other's body appearance. And what he concludes is the, the more the participants express concerns for their partner's appearance, the less satisfied they were in the relationship. And he also discusses how it affects their sex drive. He says that objectification leads to shame and anxiety, which in turn results in the inability to connect with internal bodily states, something that is um, centrally important for experiencing sexual pleasure. And um, this is shown in advertising how they kind of objectify women, there's a sex object. So it, it basically dehumanizes them. And it leads me to my next one, that advertisement could cause women to women's dehumanization and be seen as decoration. Um, women are portrayed as sex objects and rarely seen as progressive roles in advertisement. Um, author Naomi Wolf from Beauty Myth, How Images of Beauty Are Used Against Women, discusses how children and young women have sexual identities that, are, um, that spiral around the blank torsos in women's magazines. They're being imprinted with a sexuality that's mass-produced, deliberately dehumanizing, and inhuman. Another academic journal that I've read, a, a test of media literacy effects and sexual objectification in advertisement, shows how women are shown in progressive roles in advertisement. And what they conclude is that 3% of ads show women in um, progressive roles, such as executives or um, managers, where, however, in 2006, studies show that women owned 40% of businesses in the US. This means that the majority of ads, 73%, feature women in a decorative manner, focusing on female figure and sex appeal. Now, we can only um, think about how this affects women and their, how they view their bodies. Advertisement could cause women to create unrealistic goals, leading to an unhealthy body obsession. Um, Rosalind Emily, writer of When the Beauty Ideal Becomes a toxic, toxic Pursuit, provides us with a variety of statistics that show how women are affected by this. Uh, she says that 80% of women are unhappy with their appearance. 67% of 25 to 45 year olds are trying to lose weight currently, but 50%, 53% of them are at a healthy weight already. And she also discusses how how far they would go. Like 69% of 18 year olds and over favor plastic surgery. That's a 77% increase from 2006. And this basic sh basically shows how far women will go to achieve the goal that advertisers show. Um, this could also lead to disorders. For example, American Psychological Association Task Force on Sexualization of Girls um, explains that sexually objectified images of women in ads are linked to negative ramifications such as low self-esteem, depression, eating disorders, and ill ideas towards sexuality. We already, I already discussed how it affects older women. How does it affect younger girls? In eating disorders, body image, and advertising, Harry Croft writes that from the girls that he studied, the number one wish girls had from 11 to 17 years old is to be thinner. And girls as young as five years old expressed fears of gaining weight. He also discusses that 47% of the girls that were influenced by magazine pictures to want to lose weight, but only 29% of them were actually overweight. 
He also discusses that 80% of 10 year olds have actually tried a form of dieting. So if I can leave you with anything um, from my speech, it's from a quote that Jeanne Kilborn, which is a famous, she's actually spent her whole life um, on this topic. She once said in a conference that advertising tells women that what's most important is how we look. Failure is inevitable because the ideal is based on absolute flawlessness. It can't be achieved. No one looks like this, including the model. I'm sure you guys have heard of Photoshop. Everything is Photoshopped. Newspapers are the only ones that have regulations on what to be Photoshopped. Other than that, everything's Photoshopped, even food. Um, supermodel Cindy Crawford once said, I wish I looked like Cindy Crawford in the magazine. So I've discussed how um, advertising could cause negative effects in relationship satisfaction, use and treatment towards women, and women body goals. So make sure that advertising does not influence you in any way. All right, before we rush out of here, let me just make a couple of comments for Elizabeth. I think that uh, the secondary claims are pretty well laid out, but you need to really identify your main proposition more clearly at the beginning of the speech. Um, you're also rushing, uh, I think, a little bit from claim to claim as you're going there. Uh, the transition to the second point was, was um, clear, uh, like I said. And then you've got a lot of information in the speech some of which I think uh, is connected to advertising, some of which I'm not sure is, and then there are some very general conclusions. Like uh, the, at the end, you've got all this stuff that these things are linked to this, and I'm going, well, what's the proof that links it? Uh, the fact that somebody wrote that it's this, that it has that, suddenly it's been linked with that, and it sounded to me like a lot of your evidence is the testimony of these people, and the basis of their authority is that they are authorities on this. In fact, the last person that you quoted who spent their whole life on this, I, I want to know what their research was that allows them to reach these conclusions. That's what I think was missing a little bit. I'm not saying that these people are not trustworthy, uh, or that there's anything wrong with them, but we're getting their opinions, and sometimes we're not even given uh, what the basis of their expertise is, much less the uh, information. Now, we did get some good statistical information. Uh, this is the first time I've heard somebody actually confront the uh, elephant in the room, and that is that the number of people who need to lose weight is less than the number of people who think that they need to lose weight. Because that's always been one of those issues. We've got all these people who are worried about, oh, we're creating this distorted image of being thin, when I keep hearing how the world is fat. Uh, we need to go the other direction. And apparently there's a 12% difference between what people really need, people who need to lose weight, and people who think they need to lose weight. That 12%, that's basically the meat and potatoes, sorry about that analogy, for, uh, <laughs> For, for your argument, that it's those people who are the ones who are influenced. So I got a little bit something more specific there. All right, thank you all for your patience. We have to get out of here so this next class can get in. And if you are a day three speaker and you haven't given me your outline, please do so now. Um, Tuesday, uh, Thursday. Is it okay if I email it to you? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Oh, uh, well, I, no, I can go print it out right now. Are you gonna... No, if, if you... Oh, I keep this? Yeah, right. yeah, she has my, my yeah, you're doing a refutation of her speech? Yeah. That's yours to take notes on and... Okay. It's the same day as her speech. It's the same day as my speech. Because I go on Thursday and then she got pushed to, to Thursday. She was supposed to go today. That's okay. Right? Just still do it? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Uh, will you be emailing oh, me back? Oh, yeah. My outline was emailed to you, so... When, when did you email it to Last me? Thursday. I, I printed stuff up. Did you come in late? No, I, I did. I even emailed you. What's your topic? Uh, assisted suicide. Oh, I did. You mean today? Yeah. Thank you. Are you going to be around here? Yeah, yeah Brad, uh, whoever's doing the NFL speech, I bet that's... Alexis, no. Thank you. Will you be in your office? Yes, I'm going to my office right now.
This is this is your uh, your day three speaker. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Across the home. Okay. No problem. I'll be right there. I'm going to collect all your blue books so you can uh, take those out and uh, pass them forward. <coughs> 